And it's, the, it's our lack of understanding that causes our problems. There's your genetic nature, the way you're programmed genetically, is going to dictate whether you operate dominantly from the right hemisphere of your brain or the left hemisphere. The right hemisphere of the brain is the creative. That deals with colors, um, pictures, music, feelings. Uh, the left hemisphere of your brain is more linear. It's, a, it's an intellectual. Well, a person that's very left brain, that's very intellectual, very linear in their thinking, and they're going to have difficulty with this to start off with. First of all, we're raised to believe that's where your answer is. You've got to figure it out. When we're little kids, we go to our parents and we say, Mommy, Daddy, I want so something. Well, how are you going to get that? Well, the kid doesn't know how they're going to get it. And so what do we do? We leave them with the impression they can't get it because they don't know how they're going to get it. Or where's the money going to come from? Well, they don't know where the money's coming from. So we leave them with the impression because they don't know where the money is. They have to give up their dream. And they let it go. And unfortunately, that's programmed into their mind at a very early age. See, that's called environmental conditioning, and it, it's rampant. I mean, almost all welfare recipients are third, fourth, fifth generation welfare recipients. So at a very early age, we're programmed to believe that if we don't know how it's going to happen, let it go. If we can't see where the money's going to come from, forget it. In fact, when most people, they set their goal, if they can't see how it's going to happen, they don't set the goal. That's setting a goal for what you think you can do. And so you keep backing up until you got it all planned on. Now, I, I think there's no inspiration in going after something you think you can do. You've got to go after something you want. Now, understand, when you're going after what you want, you will not know how it's going to happen. I've had the good fortune of working with Redmond Hillary on three different occasions. The only thing that I could see different in Hillary than anyone else is his size. He's a big guy. He shakes hands, his hand will wrap right around you. He did not know how to get to the top of that mountain. The guy's a beekeeper from Auckland, New Zealand. What did he know about getting to the top of the highest mountain in the world? Nobody had ever climbed the mountain. So he couldn't find out how to get to the top. He couldn't read about it. Nobody had ever written about it. In fact, there was sufficient evidence to discourage 99% of the population that you couldn't get. Anybody that had tried had died. Do you know that you can find people encased in ice up at the top of that mountain, and they're never coming down? They're frozen to death, and they're going to stay there. You can see them in the ice. When people see them, they haven't got enough energy to get them out. So he was told he couldn't do it. And in 1951, here's the beekeeper, put the money together, put his team together, and away he goes from Auckland to Nepal. He gets his guides, and off they go. And they failed. They, failed. they didn't get to the top of the mountain. They failed. They had to go home. And all his friends and relatives said, see, I told you you couldn't do it. Well, he said, we didn't do it, but we're going to do it. Well, then they started to get angry with him. They said, you're going to lose your life. The air is so thin up there, you can't breathe. You just can't do it. It's impossible. But in 1952, he went back to Nepal. More money, more resources. And you know something? He blew it again. He didn't do it. No, he failed. He failed. But you see, failing is a part of winning. Do you know what he did? That made him more determined. So back he went to Auckland, and then in 53, he came back. And do you know in 1953 that Ed Hillary and Tenzing Norgay stood on top of the world? They were the first people to ever do it. Do you know what I really, I really like about it? It's sort of a side note. No one's ever said who stood there first. Was it Hillary or was it Tenzing Norgay? Now, Norgay's dead and Hillary's not talking, so we're never going to know. <laughs> but the point is, they got there. Well, do you know that there's been over a 1,000 people go to the top of Mount Everest since he did. It almost seems if somebody's done it, then we believe it. But he believed that no one had done it. How'd the Wright brothers get off the ground? You could prove that you couldn't fly. But they knew you could because they could see it. You see, if you can see it, you can do it. How are you going to do it? Well, you'll be able to tell the person that after you do it. It's not all locked up in your intellect. It's locked up in faith. It's locked up in the belief that if you hold the idea, you'll move into the right vibration and you will attract it. See, you've got to understand the laws. You've got to understand your relationship with the laws. And you've got to know that you can do it. Where will the money come? Wherever it is right now. You will attract it. 
I remember Ray Stanford, the man that taught me this. He took out a wad of bills. He always had money, and I never had any. He said, listen, Bob, he said, this stuff can't talk, but it can hear. And he said, if you call it, it'll come. Man, you never forgot that. Man, I'm hollering, and it didn't come. It came when I understood, understood abundance, understood the spirit of opulence, understood. You see, you can go into the most ancient writings there is from the Upanishads. It says, from abundance. You took abundance, and still abundance remains. You're dealing with infinite. You can never take more than your share. It's a beautiful concept. Hillary got to the top of the mountain because he believed he could get to the top of the mountain. He understood how the mind worked. He understood if he kept going, and he kept the image of what he wanted. He didn't see himself dying. He didn't see himself encased in ice forever. He saw himself going to the top and coming back down. And that's exactly what he did. Well, that's the way you've got to see it. You've got to get to the top of your mountain. You've got to see yourself going to the top of your mountain and know that what you need will come as you need it. The only way you're really going to grasp this is understand the laws, understand what we're talking about. You can't study this too much. I've been studying it every day now for 45 years, and I think I'm really just getting a grip on it. But the beautiful part about it is there's no end to it. Think of this for a moment. And think about with respect to goals and goal achievement. You could be reading a good book, a novel, and you're really into it. And you really don't want it to come to an end because you're enjoying it so much. And yet you do want it to come to an end because you want to know how it turns out. But you know it's going to come to an end. You could be uh, maybe out for dinner with someone in a really good company, good conversation, and you're really enjoying the dinner. You know it's coming to an end. You can go on a vacation. And you know it's coming to an end. You may be really locked into what I'm teaching, but you know that this DVD is coming to an end. You know that. When you start studying this, there isn't any end to it. So for 45 years, I wake up every day and I find, I can get more. There's more. I can understand more. Yeah, and it keeps you jazzed. It keeps you turned on. It winds your stem every day when you wake up because you know you're dealing with infinite. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about your potential. You don't know what you can do. Nobody knows what you I don't care what you've done. See, when I started out, I was unhappy. I was sick. I was broke. I had two months high school formal education. I had no business experience. Man, you talk about losing. I was the patron saint of losers. I mean, I was blowing it right and left. But, you know, that's behind. That's where you've been. That doesn't have to determine where you're going to go. You're not going to figure out how to do it until after you've done it. Now, here's another point. After you've done it, you still won't know how you did it because there's all kinds of serendipitous little things happen while you're getting there that you're not even aware. I'll give you a good example. I made this up. I made it up in a seminar one time. It's just come to my mind. I want you to imagine that you're working towards your goal and you know you're going to get there, but you don't know how. You've got this particular problem, this challenge that's really stretching you, and it's testing you, and you just don't seem to be able to solve it. But you're thinking about it all the time. You're in the supermarket. You're shopping. The place is crowded. A long lineup to get through the cashier. And you're thinking, oh, yeah. So anyway, you're in the lineup, and you've got this bag full of stuff, and somebody comes along and whack right into your buggy. And you turn to see what happened. And when you turn, all of a sudden the thought of what happens left your mind. There's a headline on some little rag tabloid that's in a rack by the cashier. And that whatever it was in that headline, it hit your brain and triggered a series of thoughts, and the solution to your problem pops in your mind. Now, after you reach the goal, do you look back maybe three months, eight months, 60 days, and think, if that person hadn't run into my cart, <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that. That's one of those serendipitous little deals that happen, that trigger your mind, that flip your brain onto a different frequency. See, we do think on frequencies. And the answer to the solution, to the way to get there, it's on a higher frequency. So we've got to keep raising our level of conscious awareness. See, consciousness, as Dr. Michael Beckwith put it, he put it so beautiful, he said, consciousness is being aware that you are aware. Consciousness is being able to think about what you're thinking about. This is all so important. Now, did you know when we started this series, not in this particular 
DVD, 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 but the other one. I told you to sit down and write your goal out. Now, if you didn't write that out, you've got all this beautiful information, and it's just beautiful information. The Bible's full of beautiful information. The Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, all the great psychology books, Harvard Library, there's millions of books of great information. It's not going to get you to where you're going. It's individual little ideas. You've got to focus on the goal, and the ideas will pop into your mind. They come to you. Seek ye first this kingdom of expansion, and the way will be shown. Always has, always will. It's a law. Quit trying to figure it out before you get there. Just enjoy the trip. Enjoy the fact that you're going down a path you've never been down before. Enjoy every little experience. Love it. And don't worry about when until people tell you you're wasting your time, you're going to fail. What they're doing is saying, this is how I see the world, so this is how you should see the world. Just thank God you're not one of them. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to know how. We have to have faith and belief. If you know how, you're going to the wrong place. Right. The, the goal's too low. Absolutely. If you know how to get to where you're going, I'm not saying you shouldn't go there, but it doesn't constitute a goal. See, you have to ask, first of all, why am I setting a goal? Am I setting a goal to get the car, to get the house, to get the trip? No. You're setting a goal to raise your level of conscious awareness. That's really the purpose of a goal. The, the purpose of a goal is to get you to bring more of you to the surface. And when you do, you enjoy everything you do more. If you know how to get there, you set a goal to do what you think you can do. There's no inspiration in it, and I guarantee you'll probably blow it. You'll quit. You're not going to get a lot of support. There's no inspiration. It doesn't matter whether you've got the support when you're going after what you want. It inspires you. My God, it sets something in fire on inside of you. It's the way to live. Everything else is, I don't know, called dying, I guess.